Hi, Grover Norquist. I serve as president of Americans for Tax Reform. We're the taxpayer group that fights to keep taxes low. We ask all candidates to sign a written pledge to you that they will never ever vote to raise taxes. And we try and make sure that they keep that pledge so taxes stay down. And then we work to reduce taxes to make the economy grow faster, national level, state and local level. There's a new idea that's out in front of the American people, and that's ending the inflation tax in capital gains, where when you sell a home or stock or land, you no longer pay taxes on the inflation part of that gain, but only the real gain. So if you had a lot of inflation in the 1970s and 80s that has made your house more expensive or more valuable, or stock you owned or land, when you sell that, you don't pay taxes on the inflation, just on the real gain. Be a tremendous uh, economic boost for the uh, economy. And here's a discussion that we're having nationally. Can the president do it unilaterally? Can the secretary of treasury do it? And the answer is the Supreme Court in 2002 said yes, that cost can be defined as what you paid for something or cost plus inflation, the real cost. That takes the inflation out of the price when you sell it. So that's the good news is this can be done without fighting with Congress or asking uh, anybody else's permission. It can be done by, in effect, an executive order redefining cost. What will it do and for who? Uh, some on the left have said, oh, this is just for rich people. They kind of say that whenever we cut taxes on anybody, including gasoline taxes, for heaven's sakes. But do, do they have a point? Well, 55% of American adults own shares of stock. Many, many Americans, tens of millions, own homes. Uh, more and more young people own 401ks and IRAs and have stock inside that. How will this benefit people? Well, the big winners right away are older Americans, say over 55, 60, who've lived through uh, the inflation of the 1970s. Their stock, their land, and so on has really gone up in value largely because of inflation. This could cut their capital gains taxes when they sell an asset by 80% or so. So it's a very big deal for older Americans. It's a very big deal for people who live in the middle of the country. If you live in a more rural area, the land, your home, didn't go up as much as uh, San Francisco did. And in fact, inflation is a bigger part of the capital gain that you would have to pay taxes on. So it's particularly helpful for people in rural areas, people in the Midwest, in the Rust Belt, who are very badly damaged by taxing inflation gains. Now, younger Americans, just getting a 401k or an IRA and putting some stock in or buying a home, the value of your home will go up. The value of your stock will go up. Why? Because when you sell it in 30 years, you're not paying taxes on all the inflation. So your asset is more valuable. All assets in America would be more valuable getting rid of the tax on inflation. And for the general economy, uh, one corporate CEO, Fortune 500 CEO, uh, estimated that $7 trillion in corporate assets would be sold very quickly because the company didn't really want it anymore, land or a building, but they didn't like the idea of paying the very high uh, tax on inflation. So you'd see this incredible redistribution of assets to higher and better use, and that's good for productivity, and that's good for wages for all people that are working in the United States. So we can do it. The President, Secretary of Treasury has the authority to it. will tremendously help uh, most Americans directly, and it'll help all Americans by growing the economy. So watch for this as we move to index capital gains, or another way of putting it is, end the taxation of inflation in capital gains.